today's video is on hymn number 591 in the Lutheran Service Book. It is called, This is the Spirit's Entry Now. And it is in the Holy Baptism section of our hymnal. And you might be thinking, Karen, that's very interesting. Didn't we just talk about baptism last week with the baptism of our Lord? And you would be right because this hymn actually is from last week. It was our opening hymn. So maybe you recognize that when you were listening to the tune on the way in. Um, but I wanted to, instead of looking forward at the hymn of the day for this week, which is also a good one, I wanted to look back at this one. Both of them Holy Spirit hymns, okay? So we're still, we're staying in the same vein here. But I wanted to talk about this one because it really struck me when we sang it together in church on Sunday. And I'll tell you right now that it surprised me that it struck me and that I liked it so much. And it surprised me because it is very clearly a contemporary hymn. It is very, very clearly a 20th century thing. And those are not normally my favorite, um, which is a bias that I have that is probably a personal problem. But this one is is a contemporary hymn that just is beautiful. I mean, it it's very, um, it's short, it's sweet, but it has this very rich washing imagery and these wonderful baptismal truths that it talks about. So we're going to talk about why I like this hymn. First off, I want to talk about the tune in the text, though. The tune is Damascus Road. That's the name of it. It was written by a Christian Reformed composer named Roy Hopp. He composed it in 1988 for use with a, a text at his church where he was the music director. But the Lutheran Service Book is actually the first place that this tune is printed. So we have the distinct pleasure of being the first ones to sing it out of a hymnal, which is kind of cool. But it's very pretty, it's very singable, and I'm not going to be surprised when we see it used with other texts in the near future. The text that we do have it paired with here is by a man named Thomas Herbrinson. Herbrinson was a pastor in the American Lutheran Church serving a parish in White Bear Lake, Minnesota, when he wrote this hymn in the 1960s. And his inspiration came from a combination of a couple of different things, including the approaching baptism of his first child, but also what he saw as Lutheran hymnody, well, and especially contemporary Lutheran hymnodies, um, lack of hymns on the theme or topic of baptism. And so Herbinson helped to fill this gap by writing, This is the Spirit's Entry Now, a baptismal hymn for publication in the Inter-Lutheran Commission on Worship's 1972 Hymnal Supplement, Contemporary Worship, Volume 4, which focused on hymns for baptism and for communion. And that supplement, along with many other like little booklets and pamphlets and things like that, what, it was a precursor to the Green Hymnal, which... Uh, I'm going to just hang on. I'm going to grab one. Uh, oh. The Green Hymnal. It was a precursor to the Lutheran Book of Worship. For those of you, I just, I had to show it, right? For those of you who track Lutheran hymnal history strictly by the color of the covers, which can get confusing because some of them have had a couple different ones, but whew. Okay, so the supplement in which this hymn appeared is a precursor to that book, which was never actually an official hymnal of the LCMS. Just, you know, a little bit of history there, hymnal history. So yes, this hymn is a contribution to the Inter-Lutheran Commission on Worship as it's gearing up for, for this book, which would come out um, about a decade, well, like a decade later. And like I said, this hymn, this short, sweet, rich hymn is just full of language and truths about baptism that I really appreciate. So let's talk about that for a second here. I love, as, we, as soon as we begin this hymn, that it calls baptism the Spirit's entry. It's just a wonderful confession, especially last week as we're celebrating the baptism of our Lord, that just as the Spirit descended on Christ in his baptism, the Spirit also descends on us and he, he enters us, right? And he remains with us and grants us the gift of faith when in our own baptism. So this is the Spirit's entry now, just a wonderful confession of the truth. Baptism's not just some symbol. The Spirit enters we're granted the gift of faith. We're cleansed of our sins. It really does things. So I also like how it has 
the words, the, the rest of this verse, the cross of Jesus on your brow, the seal both felt and heard. And again, that idea of this seal being something that's felt and heard and felt not just in our hearts of like, oh, I really, I felt the Holy Spirit, right? No, but really, truly felt, physically felt water, right? It's a, it's tangible. It's baptism is a tangible ceiling. It is one that we can look back on and we heard and we felt the truth that, that God has brought us into his kingdom, that he has sealed us as his own. So just even in that first verse, that imagery of the spirit entering us and sealing us with these, um, things that we can feel, these real physical means. And then the next three verses are all, they're all beautiful too. They continue on the second verse talking about regeneration by baptism into Christ's death. And then in verse three, how Herbinson pulls baptism. Sometimes we leave it in our infancy. We're like, oh yeah, baptism is a thing that happened. But verse three, he pulls baptism through the rest of our lives. And he, um, he talks about it as, uh, as, as Luther talks about it, where he says that this baptism, um, may we every day wake up in the reality of this baptism, that the old Adam would be drowned daily and the new creation be brought to emerge every day as we live our lives to God. So that's that beautiful language of pulling baptism through our lives in verse three. And then it's all wrapped up with a wonderful fourth verse that is a, a prayer of praise to the Holy Spirit thanking him for his renewing work, his regenerating work, not only in our baptisms, but daily by, by that baptismal promise and by his word. So just a really good, solid contribution to Lutheran hymnody. So thank you, Herbrinson, for writing this. Well, unfortunately, uh, Thomas Herbrinson passed away in 2009, but I thank God for him uh, and for his gift to the church that was, this is the Spirit's entry now. Thanks so much for watching this video. I hope you learned something and we'll see you next time. Bye.